In today's video, I will explain you named entity recognition with some Python coding. You have seen this concept before in this NLP playlist, but let's go over it in detail today. So I'm going to be explaining some real life use cases of NER and that way you can understand this concept better. The first one is search. Let's say you are on any news website, financial news website, they provide this feature where you can type in a company name. Let's say I want to search for the news for Tesla. When I click on it and scroll down, I see the latest news on Tesla. And when I go to any news, you'll see this tag, you know, that for the news, it, it's, it knows that this is the news of company Tesla. Now CNBC editor might be putting this tag explicitly, but I think the better example is something like Google News, where they are an aggregator website where all they get is a text. And based on the text, you have to derive the company that the news is about. So essentially, you're looking at the text, and in that text, you're trying to extract companies. Okay, what which companies are mentioned in this particular news article? So here you see it, it is just tagging. Tesla as a company. Now you might think, oh, this is easy. All you can do is just search for company Tesla or any other company. You can have 20,000 different companies and just search for it. But it, it might not be that straightforward because Tesla could be a name of a person also. You, you know, Nikola Tesla, a genius scientist. So when I see a term Tesla in any blog or any article, I don't know if it's a person or company. So that's when the NER system uh, can be useful, where the system actually tells you what entity it is, okay? So NER is basically named entity recognition where you try to extract different entities in your, in, in your text. So here, Elon Musk is a person, Tesla is a company. There could be a location like New York, India, these are locations money, name of the drug, the entities could be anything. So when I have a lot of articles, let's say you are building a website such as Google News and you have a lot of articles and you don't know what entities are mentioned. Maybe you can use any R system and it will extract all the entities. For example, see here, I have shown different examples, right? Where companies, products, even look at this example where the Pixel 7 is a product, so the entity here is product. Here there are two entities, Tesla and Twitter. So if you can extract these entities, then you know, in the CNBC example we saw, if person can type in just a name of the company or name of the product, we can show you all relevant articles. So this is very useful in case of search. The other use, uh, use case is recommendation, which is, Associated with the first use case we, which we already mentioned, you might have seen on many websites, for example, on Bloomberg News, I see this section where it says stories for you, which means these are the stories which they are showing based on my preferences. This is a recommendation system. So here, let's say I have read article about Elon Musk or Hong Kong before, then from that article, let's say if the entities are Elon Musk, location is Hong Kong. And if I like to read such an article, it will show me similar articles or having a similar entity. Uh, same like news, uh, not news, but the movie recommendation system. I have a Disney subscription and I like to watch National Geographic uh, documentaries. So here, when you're looking at a documentary, the entities could be. Who is the production house? Is it Marvel, Pixar, National Geographic? Who are the actors in the movie? Right? So these are production house, actors, these are various entities. And if I have a preference of watching movies from certain actor or certain production house, then the recommendation system can show me the movies or documentaries from those preferences. The third use case is customer care service. I built this uh, website called coldbasics.io for, it's a, it's a learning portal basically. And here is an awesome course I have out on 
Power BI Data Analytics and there is a report issue button. So if someone is facing issue in my course, they can report an issue, okay? Now see, uh, this can be made simple by, right now I know you are in Power BI course, so I know actually that the issue is related to Power BI. But let's say if you have a generic form where you can just type in text and I don't know what course you're talking about, okay? Then what happens? Like how do I know which course it is? So when you submit a query from codebasic.io website, in the backend, I'm getting these queries from many, many people. Well, the reality is we have not seen any major issues so far, but let's say you're talking about big system where there are multiple people uh, filing multiple complaints. And let's say you have separate customer support team. Let's say for Power BI course, I have a separate team and for Python course, there is another team and they both handle the queries related to that course because they are trained to answer the queries in that particular course. Now, if I can extract the entities, which is a course, let's say here course is my entity. And if I can extract the course name, then I can route those issues to a relevant ticket. Now you can have a drop down, simple drop down in the contact us form and you can have user selected, but if you auto detect that, then it's uh, it, it looks nice, you know? So it's, it's better. All right, so now let's open Jupyter Notebook and write code in Spacey and we are going to use inbuilt NER system. And then towards the end, we'll talk about how you can build your own uh, NER system. We will now explore NER support in Spacey. As usual, I have downloaded Spacey's English model. And now I'm going to look at all the pipe names. So this shows you the, the components in that NLP pipe. And we see a component called NER. So we'll see how this particular component works. You can have a statement like this. Tesla is going to acquire Twitter. It's kind of dangling right now. I don't know what's gonna happen. And if you want to look at all the entities here, you can say for entity in doc.entities. So doc.entities contains all the entities in this particular statement. And then you can print ent.text. So that is the label. And just for a separator, I will use this pipe operator. And then you can print ent.label. So this prints the actual label, whether it's a company, whatever. And also I'm going to, okay, let me just try this first. So it says Tesla incorporation is organization, 45 billion is money. And if you want to see expanded version of this token, you can use spacey.explain, spacey.explain, and then give label as an argument. It says org means companies, money means monetary value, etc. You can use displacy. We have used this before in our tutorial. Displacy to, you know, visually render the same thing in a better way. So it's the same thing, but I am saying style is equal to ENT. So display C dot render the document and the style I want is ENT. ENT means entities. So when I do that, see it says Tesla and C's org and Twitter, uh, uh, 45 billion is money. Twitter, it did not recognize because looks like Spacey is using some kind of rules or patterns to recognize company. So if I say twitter.inc, that's a popular way of representing companies in US incorporation. Okay, that did not work quite well. So now you're realizing here that Okay, let me try this. See, Twitter, when I capitalized it, it worked. So you're realizing that uh, the species out of the box named entity recognition is not perfect. And that's perfectly fine. It is using some kind of rules that if there is a word 
with first letter as capital followed by INC, then that's a company. All right, we'll look into uh, how you can build your own model a little later, but let's first see what all entities that Spaces supports. We just looked at org and money. If you try this particular instruction, it will print all the entities that Spacey supports with that particular model, with this particular trained model, okay? This model is a pre-trained model and that supports these many entities. So language, money, percentage, product, even work of art and so on. Let me try different stat statement. I used to work for Bloomberg and Bloomberg was a company name, but Michael Bloomberg was a person who founded that company. So now if you print the entities, so I will just use my most powerful weapon here, which is control C, control V. And it says, Michael Bloomberg is a person. This is, now this is wrong, okay? Michael Bloomberg, this, it should have recognized as a company, but Bloomberg is saying GPE. If I do Bloomberg INC, maybe it will work. See, now it says corporate company or L dot P. Okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is funny. It's saying my Bloomberg LP is a person. So you're saying this is not perfect, but it works on many cases. In 1982, it said it is a date. So I want to try a different model now. So here in, in Google, you can say, Hugging Face is a popular machine learning NLP library. And you can say Hugging Face Name Entity Recognition. And they have some word based name entity recognition, which you can try here. So here, see, it is using this code, which is Hugging Face. We use Spacey, but this particular model is used for three type of entities, location, organization, person, and miscellaneous, four entities. And if you do compute, see it says Sarah is a person, London is this. You, you can look at different example, right? Right, like say this, see? Clara lives in California, so Berkeley, California, both of them it identified as a location. You can type your own thing as well. You can say Bloomberg founded Bloomberg in 1980. Now here again, see this is making mistake. But if I do, because Bloomberg, both Bloomberg it is saying organization. The first one is actually person. See now Michael Bloomberg is person. So you're realizing that it depends on how we have trained the model. When we are using this ready-made Spacey library, we are using this, this particular model, which is already trained using bunch of rules and vocabulary. So you might want to set a custom entity, for example, here, in this, it is not recognizing Tesla or Twitter as companies, okay? And 45 billion is a money, so that's fine. Now, what if I want to add those two entities specifically? I want to say that, hey, Spacey, these two are companies, okay? So you can do that. So let me first explain you a concept of a span, Span, not spam. So span is a class in Spacey. So when you are looking at, for example, when you're looking at, 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 at any single token, this is a single token. And if you look at the type of this, it is a token. But using Python's slice index operator, let's say you say two to five, it is showing you a span of tokens, like a substring going to acquire and the way it works is it starts with index two so see zero one two so see going going three four so it doesn't go all the way till five it follows the usual python convention so start with zero uh, start with two go all the way till five but do not include five and if you look at the type see it is span not spam you can import this span class from Spacey. And what you can say is my T 
T1, or let's say S1, my first pen from this document starting from 0 to 1. So when I say 0 to 1, it is just one token, which is Tesla. Okay. So in this doc object, 0 to 1, which is Tesla, you're saying it is org. And similarly, okay, where is Twitter? So Twitter is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5, start from 5, go all the way 6, but do not include 6. And th these two are my, my org entities. And there is a function on, called set ENTS. So on the doc, you can set set ENTS. In the bracket, specify all the entities that you want to set. So S1, S2, and then say default is equal to unmodified. So default, un whatever default entities are there, you keep them as is and do not modify them. And if you want to see your documentation, use your friend Google Spacey set ENTS shows you a documentation somewhere. I don't know where. But this Google is not recognizing it properly. So on the doc, maybe set ENTS this. Okay. How to set entity under for tokens outside of any provided span. So you can read through the description, but this will basically set those two entities. So unmodified, default is unmodified. Hold on. There was a spelling mistake. And when I print the same entities again, now it is recognizing Tesla and Twitter as an organization. Okay, so I can just rerun it again. Because there was T that that you know I fixed the spelling for T. Now I showed you how to use spaces inbuilt capabilities of NER, but let's say you want to build your own NER system because we saw the the out of the box NER system has some bugs, some issues. Let's say you are having a pharmaceutical data set and you want to set entity for a drug, you need to do certain things so that you can train your own model. So I'm going to go very brief into that. So how can I build my own NER? The first approach is simple lookup. So this is not, a, some people say this is not NLP. This is not, this is a simple hard-coded approach. You can have a database of companies, location, drugs, and as you get more companies or location or drugs in your vocabulary, you have a process where a, an operator manually adds that entity into these databases. And when you look at the tax and tokenize it, you do comparison. It's like a very stupid, very naive approach, but it works. So some folks use this simple lookup and you know, as long as it works, you don't need to have unnecessary emotional attachment for NLP or machine learning. Depends on your use case. Maybe for your use case, simple lookup look is the best idea. The second approach is rule-based NER. And we saw already in Spacey that it was using some rule that if there is a word followed by INC and the first letter of the word is capital, that is a company. Similarly, Let's say if there is a statement like this, Thor was born in 1865. However, I don't know the real birth date of Thor. Then you can say, if you find this kind of pattern was born in something and before was, if there is a proper noun, we looked at POS before. So if you've not seen that video, go check it out. So if that is a proper noun, then that token is person. You can have that kind of rule. You can have a rule for phone numbers. For phone number based thing is regular expression, regex. We have covered, covered regex in, in this tutorial playlist. So regex or any other rules. But there are basically rule based NER and Spacey provides a class called entity ruler that can be used to write or specify all these rules. Okay, and I found this nice article 
which I'm going to show you guys. So the article description is there. Article link is there in the description. So see here to recognize phone number, you can use entity ruler class and you can specify your pattern like this. This is just a syntax that you can use to specify that pattern. And when you do that, see, it says phone number. This is a phone number. I'm not covering this because this is just the basics of NER. In the future, maybe we'll build our own NER system. I'm, I'm thinking of building a resume parser as a, as a project. So in the future, we'll have end-to-end -end NLP project in this playlist where we, we will use NER and Spacey to custom train our model. But yeah, the third approach is machine learning where you can use a technique called conditional random fields. Now, I know I don't like to use jargons and I'm throwing jargon at you. Don't, don't worry. Just keep this thing in your mind that CRF is something that can be used for NER machine learning model. And BERT is another popular approach. That's all I had for this tutorial. The link for the code is in a video description below. I did not get a chance to create exercises for this video. But sometimes when I find a time later on, I put exercises. So always check video description. Maybe I'll add some exercises at a later stage. And if you want to help me, what you can do is you can go to my GitHub, create your exercise, fork the repo, create an exercise, give me a pull request. And if your pull request gets merged, you know, the whole world benefits. Not the whole world, but at least the people who are watching this video and who wants to work on exercise will benefit and I will give you all the due credits. I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Sharing on LinkedIn is a very effective way of sharing good resources that you're finding. I see some of my subscribers are doing that, that if they find not only my video, but any other video on YouTube, which they find it useful, they share it on LinkedIn and kind of helps spread the word. Music